Good morning. Today is step 27 Sagittarius. So we're now taking actions on the story you were born to live. Put in the comments if you're feeling this energy. I'm actually gonna read a little bit of the astrology today because it's so big. Um, so today you begin a new chapter in your life's story and personal narrative. Action is the ruling state of awareness. Shifting focus to action and behavior. In particular, action and behavior that's in alignment with your new belief structure and the updated narrative you were devoted yourself to yesterday. So for the past month, we've been updating our beliefs, what's possible in your life, what your narrative is, what story you want to tell yourself. Today, we're taking action on that. So with action energy ruling the day, the time has come to put your latest beliefs into motion. By acting on something you believe in, you will trigger a cause event that will seed the manifestation of your belief into reality. You are literally making a belief become real with the means under your jurisdiction. Are you feeling that? So for instance, if you decided yesterday that you believe you are worthy of success, then treat yourself today as if you are ready success. If you devoted your heart to that belief, you will find the perfect home to move into. Start packing your current residence by taking a consequential action to your intentions. You, began, you begin manifestation. Today is special for another reason. The sun crosses the galactic center. So for those of you who don't know what the galactic center is, it's the center of the universe. It's where creation began. And it's at 27 degrees Sagittarius. It was at a different degree before, but it moves. So the sun is crossing the galactic center today. This means the actions you take today are being recorded and coordinated into the collective consciousness. The action you perform will create a galactic cause, altering your intergalactic karma. This means you are updating your relationship to all of creation, as well as your beliefs on Earth at the same time. So you are evolving on Earth, and you are evolving the reason why you came to Earth at the same time. The actions you take today will have a special cosmic timing. Listen to your feelings and your intuition before you make your move. Be certain there are no warnings or weird feelings before you act. That's it. So we keep talking about it, where people are updating their story. And today is to take action on that. And there's only a couple more days left in Sagittarius, which is the story, which is your beliefs, which is the narrative. And if you have trauma and you repeat the story or you repeat the narrative over and over again, and you believe in the narrative, then that trauma gets stored in your body. So today is an opportunity to write a new story. Today is an opportunity to create a vision for yourself of what you look like in the year to come. This is a really good time to sit down and define what your next year looks like. Where do you want to go? What are the places you want to see? What do you want to achieve? Who do you want to meet? What are the things that you want to come into your life? Who is the person that you want to become? Today is the time to do that. So however you want to do it, if you want to write it in bullet points, if you want to grab pictures and put it on a vision board, if you want to do a mind map, you can do it in different ways. If you want to write a story, if you want to just put some questions down and answer them, there's so many different ways to write down your goals and your new story. Sometimes some are easier than others. Sometimes it's easier to put it in bullet points and then it's easier to put it on a mind map afterwards. Sometimes I like having a mind map because I can see everything and how it connects. So let me know in the comments how you're feeling today. We got a slower, quieter group today. If you have any questions. We just did our autoimmune workshop yesterday. We're gonna see if we can package that and share it with other people afterwards because it was recorded. We did do a presentation. 
What does a mind map look like? Well, uh, I would define the categories of your life. So in the center would be you. One of the arms would be your relationships. Another arm would be your health. Another one would be your family, friendships, rest and relaxation, sexuality, and each of those categories, there, there's more, but you can define which ones you want to put there. And in the center is you, you've got your category. So let's say it's you and then health and wellness. And then off of health and wellness, what do you want? Do you want to look younger? Do you want to feel good in your body? Do you want to wake up with energy? Do you want to sleep better? Do you want to have lucid dreams? Do you want to be more in touch with your emotions? Do you want to be more aligned with your body? Do you want to go to relationships and you're single? Do you want a partner that supports you? Do you want one that um, is kind, compassionate, caring, energized, loving, joyful, adventurous? Do you want one that's, or do you want a family that's connected, that does things together? So maybe in the year to come, you want to bring your family together and you could put on Thanksgiving dinner for the first time in five years, my family got together and we had dinner and we connected for the first time in a long time. And we had the best conversations that we ever had. So there's different ways to do it. If you want to do maybe travel, if you want to travel, where do you want to go? What are the things you want to see? How do you want to feel when you're traveling? Do you want to feel comfortable? Are you going to bootstrap it and backpack and be as cheap as possible? Or are you going to be comfortable and have lots of leg room on the plane? And are you going to smell, um, you know, incense or perfume? Are you going to uh, meet people there? Are you going to see things? Are you going to adventure? Are you going to be able to stay there for weeks at a time? Are you going to be more in nature or more in the city? So these are just the avenues off of what your life is, you create each little category and you can define some characteristics around it. And it can be really specific or you can go broad and then get specific. So if you're, if you're saying, well, I wanna to go to Canada, I mean, that's the first step. And then maybe you realize that some of Canada is too cold for you. So you narrow it down a little bit. And then you realize that you want to live in nature, so then you narrow it down even more. But you don't want to be too far away from the city, so you narrow it down even more. And now you have more clarity on where you're going. So you can build out your plan. That's if you want to do it in a mind map. If you want to do it in bullet points, you could just say, and I want you to speak from past tense, but I can't believe how amazing it was when me and my family had Christmas dinner together and we sat around the dinner table and played board games and had really deep conversations and connected and we cried and released some emotions that we were holding against each other. I don't know, something like that. Or I had the best time traveling to Egypt and climbing some of the pyramids and I met like a lifelong friend and, uh, connected deeper with my body. So that could be a bullet point. So bullet points can be easier too, but I want you to write it as if it's already happened. And then as you're writing it, I want you to actually meditate on that for a moment and see if when you close your eyes or you tune into that, is that actually something that you want? Does it, how does it feel? Like you can go there without going there. You can close your eyes. You can put your body in the space that you want to be in or with the person you want to be with or the people you want to be with and then feel that experience. What do you smell? What do you taste? What do you hear? What do you feel on your skin? Who's around you? What's the background noise? You know, you can, what am I doing? What decisions am I making? And test them all. And the thing I like about meditation or visualization is you can do way more than you can in the physical world at a much faster speed without any consequence. So for example, if I wanna design my room and I'm trying to figure out where to put all my furniture, I can move my furniture around 
try and find a place to put it. Or I could visualize moving things in different places and feel what that feels like. Oh, if my bed goes here, what does that feel like in my heart? What does that feel like in my gut? Does that feel like it's in alignment? No. Good morning, Liz. And and so you can con- you can actually visualize and move different pieces of furniture around your room until you find one that 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 resonates. Once it resonates, then that's the one that you keep. Then you wake up in the physical world and you can actually start to move it around. But if you were to do that in the physical world, that would take you hours and you would be sweating because you're moving all your stuff around. So visualization is a really powerful way to try something in the physical world without having to actually take any action, without having to use any energy. And you can try 20 or 30 different arrangements of your room just in meditation for five minutes versus it would take you six hours to do that in your room. So visualization comes with whatever bullet point, whatever mind map point that you're using to create your future. You don't wanna just write it and it's from your ego and it's just something that you heard that you think you want, but you've actually never felt it yourself. Go feel it in the, in the metaphysical or in your meditation. What is that experience like? Is that something that I actually wanna experience? And sometimes you won't know the answer. Sometimes it's something so new to you, you don't know. So then just put it out there and then, then go taste testing, go try something in the physical world for the first time and see what that feels like. Like for example, one of the ones that I put is that we're gonna be on a, sta- we're gonna be on a stage in front of a stadium of like 50,000 people doing a fashion maneuvers class. Whoa, okay, um, that's, that's nerve wracking. I don't know if I could emotionally handle that when I wrote that down. So what I did over the next, over the next three years was we did a class in the park and there were 10 people. Then we did a class in the park and there were 50 people. Then we did a class in the park and there were 100 people. Then we did a class in the park and there were 300 people and we couldn't stand in front of them on a stage. So I had to deal with a different way of handling the class. Then we did a class with like almost 400 people. Now we just did one on Saturday and we actually had a stage. So we were indoors this time. All the other ones were outdoors. We had a stage, we were up on stage, we had a microphone, there's a couple hundred people in front of us. And so I had written that I wanted to be in front of 50,000 people, but how would I really know what that felt like if I've never even experienced it with like a hundred? So I'm trialing and erroring and feeling out all of the different things that I need to learn and the different feelings that come with that experience. If I know what the feeling's like at a hundred people, then I can just take that and amplify that. And when I'm testing it with 100 people, I learn all the skills necessary to do it with 50,000. That's why you can't just, I mean, you can, but jumping from none to 50,000 is a big jump. Like if you've never spoken in public before, if you've never been, if you've never had that many eyeballs on you at once, how are you gonna cope with that? And that's an important thing to, to understand. So when you're manifesting something or you're trying to bring something into your life, you want a taste test. And you can taste test it in the metaphysical and you can taste test it in the physical if it's completely new to you and you do it in a small way, learn, oh, I didn't even think about that. Like when we were, when we did our first classes in the park, it's in the park, no big deal. We didn't have that many people, so we didn't have to worry about parking. Then all of a sudden we had a lot of people and then we had to worry about parking. So we had to change parks. Then the park was so big that, and there was a lot of wind, so people couldn't hear us. So then we had to get speakers. I mean, these are things that you don't think of until you do it. At the event we just did, I wanted everybody that walked in to have an experience when we had a small group. When we had a small group, we had our essential oils. And when people would come, we had different chakra oils and we would put it on their hands and they could smell it and it would help calm them down and relax them, ground them, bring them back into their body, open up their chakras, and then we would do the class. But we only had 10 people. So, I mean, our bottle would last a couple of classes at least. When you do it with 100 people, you finish a bottle. So it's not really practical. And you have to go to 100 people and do it. So I wanted to simulate that experience at our event on Saturday in Vancouver. And how did I do that? Every time someone came in through the front door, there was only one entrance, so we couldn't miss them. They came in and and each person got a drop of a few oils so that they could test it. And and that's important to me because it it calms them down. It brings them into something that's really uh, brought a lot of joy to my day, which is, is adding essential oils in. And it gives them a test of that. 
So I had to figure out a new way to create the same experience because I went from doing it in the park to doing it indoors with a bigger class. Now, one of the things I learned is we had diffusers and we, we brought like 10 diffusers because I wanted it to smell really nice in there. And uh, <laughs> someone opened the car and some of them fell out and some of them broke and you have to fill them with water, then you fill them with the oil, then you gotta find an outlet, then you gotta put them around, you gotta carry them in the car. It's like a lot of work. So I learned that I'm not gonna do it that way again. I'm gonna use incense. So incense are easy, you light them, put them in a corner, you can use a little incense holder. Um, you can literally carry one box and take care of the whole building and you still get that same feeling. So by doing it at small scale, I get to learn the ins and outs of, of why I and how I should do things when it's a bigger scale. And that's really how I like to do things. If you tell me the answer from the beginning, then you take away my fun of experiencing and learning along the way. Like if you told me right away, you should do incense, not diffusers, Sometimes, not always, maybe not in that case, it takes away my experience of learning. Like if you told me everything that I needed to do, that would take away the fun. For me, I like to learn, create, and build, and, and, and try things, and then when I fail, I'm like, okay, how can I do this better? And that's sort of the process that I like to do. Now, it doesn't have to be with everything, but if you told me incense over diffusers, I probably would have listened to you because it would have made a lot of sense. But if you told me step one to step 10 of how to build an event like that, and you wrote it down on a piece of paper and I had to follow it to a T, then I would lose interest. And that's because I understand the way that I like to create. Everybody likes to create in a different way. Some people like to come in, take something that already exists and make it better. Some people like to create things from square one and then walk away from it. Everybody has a different way of creating. Everybody has a different way of doing things. And it's important to understand the people around you and give them the time and space so that they can create in the way that they want to. How to relieve uh, neck and jaw pain? Well, we could do a fascial maneuver right now. Um, so there's a couple things. Let me just put my cacao down. Um, so neck is decisions, direction, and also speaking your truth. So this is a big one in society today, but a lot of people don't speak their truth. And the reason why is they don't feel safe to. So when you're younger, you spoke your truth, someone shut you down or you got in trouble or you said something wrong and you were embarrassed and then you were afraid to now speak your truth or you didn't wanna hurt someone else's feelings. Like sometimes if I say something that is true to someone that could potentially hurt their feelings, I don't wanna say it. And so not speaking my truth, not knowing the direction I'm going, having trouble with decisions, having a lot of fear tightens up the neck. The jaw and the mouth is also speaking and expressing your truth. It's also anger. So when you're angry, you clench your jaw. When you don't want to, when you, when you don't want to speak or you shut your mouth, your jaw tightens. And we can go to the physical, which is going to be the fascial maneuvers, to then unwind the stress and tension there. But I want you to also understand where it's coming from. It's coming from not expressing yourself. It's coming from fear around decisions that you're making. So we can do all the movements in the world and it's going to help, but I want you to really focus on why it's there in the first place. And a good way to do that is just ask yourself the question and then walk away. Why am I experiencing this right now? Boom, walk away and then the answer will come. So let's do a quick one. We're gonna pull our ears. Take your left hand, grab the top of your right ear. Right hand, grab the bottom of your ear. So pull the bottom forwards and the top backwards. And this is gonna unwind all the tension in your jaw and your neck, your shoulder, your head, because the ears are easy to pull on. And fascia likes to be stretched and it likes to be stretched in counter rotation. So fascia is connected to your skin. So when you twist and pull your skin, you're actually pulling on your fascia. I want you to imagine like you had like a, like a suit for a second. If I pulled the top of the suit like this and it was attached to your whole body and I just pulled it up slowly, imagine everything here is getting pulled up. Everything from my toes all the way to my top of my head, like a bag and then walk around that's gonna feel pretty good. 
So let's actually do one to showcase what I'm talking about. You're gonna grab your hair, and I want you to imagine you're a bag. So grab the top of the bag, go right to the root, twist one way, and then you can kind of pin the forehead so it doesn't move. So twist your hair, now pull it off your head. Let's do it like this, and then when you're twisting it, let's say you're twisting it one direction, I want you to turn your head the other way. So you're counter rotating, creating as much tension as possible. Now just slowly move around and breathe. This is the weird one, but it feels really good. Okay. Now relax, and let's make a funny hair. Okay, so how does that feel? Now you've just taken your bag on the top of your head and you've pulled all the fascia to the top, and if you walk around like that, you're gonna release a lot of tension in your body. The way to work with fascia is to pin, stretch, lock, and then move slowly in counter rotation while you breathe. So what, how, what does that look like? You're gonna pin an area. You're going to stretch it, so torque it or stretch the skin. Lock it in place so it can't move. Now you're gonna move slowly in rotation, so you're rotating your whole body around while you breathe. That's how you unwind fascial restrictions. So let's do it on the other ear this time. You're gonna take your right hand, grab the top of your left ear. Left hand, grab the bo bottom of your left ear. So, we've pinned, I want you to stretch now, so move the bottom hand forward, the top hand backwards. So pin, stretch, now walk it in place. So hold it there in a stretched position. Now you're gonna move slowly in counter rotation. And breathe. And relax, shake off your hands, move your neck around, move your head around, move your shoulders around. Notice if you feel a shift. What we're doing is we're pinning, stretching, walking, moving slowly in counter rotation around this area, and then all the fascia in the rest of your body has to adapt. And because your fascia holds your muscles, your bones, your tendons, your ligaments, and your organs and all inside, when you work on the fascial restriction, you unwind that. So a question we get all the time is, but if I'm stretching my skin, is that not gonna give me wrinkles? Is that not gonna create issues over time? Look at our before and after photos. It's actually the opposite. Think of it like this. If I have a lot of fear or I'm really dehydrated, the bladder meridian, which comes all the way over the forehead, down the back, down the back, all the way to the bottom of your feet, it's going to pull tight. Now, if it pulls tight, watch this, wrinkles. So it's actually the opposite. What I wanna do is I wanna take that wrinkle and I wanna stretch the fascia over that area. Now, the wrinkle can come from tension, emotions, chemicals, and dehydration. So if you are dehydrated, you have layers of fascia like this, okay? Your body's in an expanded state. Look at kids, they're kind of like, like Michelin man, right? There's a lot of space in there. And as you dehydrate the body, you slowly dry it out. All the fluid between both ends starts to get squeezed out and it starts to dry out and it gets to this point. Now when it gets to this point, it gets sticky. And because it gets sticky, these layers, they stick to each other so they can't slide. They're supposed to glide when we move. When you move, it, it, the layers of fascia, there's, imagine there's 10 of them, they glide across each other in rotation. And if it's sticky, they stick, so they no longer glide. Now they no longer move, there's no more fluid in there, so all the toxins build up. And because the toxins build up in that area and there's no way to flush them out because there's too much restriction, it leads to disease. The body's not at ease, and if, it, and if it's not at ease for long enough, it's going to be a problem. That's where 
rashes, rosacea, gas, bloating, distension, depression, autoimmune, scoliosis, MS. All of this comes from sticky layers of the fascia. If you put chemicals in your body, those layers immediately go and they contract. They contract because they're being threatened. If you threaten your body, what happens? Fight or flight, boom. You go to the musculoskeletal system, which is there to protect and fight and run. So we don't wanna trigger that system because as you trigger that system, it has a layer closest to the bone. It pulls all the layers in so that it tightens and it's protected. When I go into a hotel, which we've done, that has a lot of chemicals in their detergent or in their, in their towels and their, their, their bed sheets, instantly my skin gets dry. Instantly. The moment I walk in the room, my layers of fascia, which are hydrated, go from here all the way to here. Because my body's trying to protect itself, it pulls all the water down to the surface. That water is now being used to clean out and filter out all the chemicals that are coming in. It's, it's, it's awful. Now, if you're in the United States, they put fluoride, statins, and chlorine in the water. So you're constantly in a deficit. You're constantly showering in that. Your body is contracting and using all of this water to flush everything out. Now you're chronically dehydrated. And if you're chronically dehydrated, those layers get sticky. If they get sticky, then nothing can flow. If nothing can flow, you get a buildup of toxins. If you get up a buildup of toxins for long enough, it leads to autoimmune, it leads to all these other issues. It's like if you didn't flush your toilet or clean your room for five years, what is it gonna look like? It's not gonna look very good. And then all of a sudden you get sick. And then when you get sick, you take a medication that suppresses that sickness so that you don't experience the uncomfortable symptoms. That's actually the problem. Your body is getting sick so it can remove those toxins. If you've been holding on to all those toxins in that and it's starting to get all sticky and gross and yellow and mucusy, you get mucus layers and, and toxins building up in different areas of your body, your body goes, okay, I've had enough. I can't hold on to this anymore. I'm gonna knock you down for a week. I'm gonna knock you down for a month and you're gonna be coughing and you're gonna be sneezing and you're gonna get really hot and you're gonna have diarrhea and you're gonna have, have a headache and you're gonna feel dehydrated and you're not gonna feel hungry. The reason why is because we're gonna get rid of everything you've been putting in. All those chemicals, all those toxins, all those emotions, all that trauma, gone. Now, why are you not hungry? Because the body heals when, it's not, when you're not eating. If you take in food, your body now uses all your energy to process that food, not to heal yourself, not to clean. What are we doing in society today? Hey, uh, body, I know you're getting really hot and you're cooking and frying all of the stuff that no longer belongs inside. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a medication. And that medication is gonna turn the thermometer down, it's gonna turn the heat down so that you stop frying all the things that shouldn't be in there. I'm gonna take something to stop all the mucus and dry it all up. Well, that should be coming out. Mucus, mucus is a good sign that things are starting to come out. Like if you get congested, that means that there's stuff blocked in these layers. So it's not a good sign to have mucus, but for it to be coming out is a good sign. You don't want that stuff in your body. Look at it. It's green and it's thick. That's what's in the layers of your fascia. There's chemicals in there. There's trauma in there. You do not want that in your body. So why do we stretch the fascia? Why do we stretch the skin? Because we're opening up those layers. When you open them, things can flow. They can flush. They can move. That's why breathing is so important for the fascia maneuvers. We do, we, don't, we do breathing differently. We do breathing to bring as much air in so that it puffs those layers up like a balloon so then everything can flow. We counter rotate and contract to generate pressure to increase the flow through those areas so things start to open up. So we use breathing to expand and contract the body not just to bring oxygen in. Oxygen is life, it does help heal the body, but we're using it to be expand, contract, expand, contract. Every time I go, air comes in, expands internally to external, 
and then I, then I exhale and it contracts, that pump, it's a pump, the lungs are a pump. They're pumping the body up. And then the heart is a dam. The, the blood all goes to the heart, it dams in there, and then when it's ready, it lets go, and, and then it flows back. The calves are a pump too, they squeeze in your lower body so that they can get to the lungs and the heart. So you wanna walk. That's why walking is also a way to work with fascia. When you walk barefoot in nature for 30 minutes, it will heal the body because the body is using so much information to walk. You're, you're moving both sides. You have to coordinate actions. It's having to work top down. Walking properly is one of the most complex things that the human body has to do. Maneuvers for brain fog, yes, let's do one. Um, so we call it the psoas release. It's not the psoas, it's actually your intestines and your organs. So what I was saying earlier is your fascia holds your muscles, your bones, your tendons, your ligaments, and your organs. It is the structure. Over the digestive system, when we sit in a chair, we crush, we take all the body weight here and we crush our lower body. We squeeze everything from the belly, from the diaphragm down into the pelvic floor. And we sit for eight hours. That gets sticky and it stops flowing and it stops moving. And then all of a sudden you have food come in trying to go through something that's already compact. And then it can't move through there. So that is why gas, bloating, distension, autoimmune, a lot of Crohn's, stomach issues, they come from a lack of flow in here. The other one is when you put chemicals in your body, those chemicals go into your gut and they dehydrate it. They destroy the lining of the walls. They destroy the microbiome. It creates restrictions in here. And if this doesn't move, then you're gonna have a problem pretty fast. So let's get it moving. Take both hands, place it on your belly button. Go two inches to the right and an inch down. Grab the fascia, like, like grab it. Grip it with your fingers, pull it up. Now step your left leg forwards, so your opposite leg, lean back. Now what we're doing is we're stretching the fascia over the intestines. There's organs and intestines that go through here. And breathe. Whew. Shake that off. Now some of you might get a head rush because your intestines are connected to your brain. When you create a change in pressure here, you change the pressure here. It's all connected. You can't affect one without the other. Let's do the other side. So take both hands, belly button, go two inches to the left. Go an inch down. Pull the fascia up, so pull the skin really tight. It might feel like a burning or a tearing sensation in the front of your hip. Step your right leg forward. Lean back and breathe. Ooh. And relax, shake it off. You might feel a little lightheaded. You might feel a little bit high. Yeah, my voice did change, didn't it? Hi, Francesca. So what we're doing, imagine your intestines. They're like little sausage casings. And the way I visualize this is, imagine you had a fish tank here. Okay, so from the diaphragm into your pelvic floor was a fish tank. So you've got your glass or your skin, and then inside there you've got all this water, and then inside there you've got maybe like a, a mini coral, some fish, um, some, some props, right? And imagine your organs like that. It's all floating inside there. And sometimes the coral might move. 
Sometimes the fish might move. Sometimes the, the actual organs in, in here move. Like if you work on somebody, their organs aren't where they're supposed to be. Some people actually have their organs completely reversed. And the reason why is it's floating in here. It floats. It's not in a static position. So as you move, it, it moves around. As you eat, it moves around. As you create restrictions or you hold trauma or you hold chemicals or you have injuries, it moves. And it's not always where you think it is. So even when we do the organ reset, we're just doing zones. We're just, it's, it's not, it doesn't have to be specifically on that organ. It just has to be in that zone to release the pressure there and to rebalance the energetic charge so that it can function optimally. So imagine they're just floating in here. So when you're working on it, don't get so caught up on the exact position. It's constantly changing. The way I see the body is we are water and, and minerals or salt or sand. And when you vibrate sand at a specific frequency, what does it do? Let me see if I can find that one second. Where's my computer? Let me see if I can play it on here. Let's watch what happens to sand when you vibrate it at a specific frequency. So, sand. You can go into YouTube and you could type in sand or, uh, yeah, amazing resonance experiment is one video. Sound and vibration of sand. So, I want to watch this for a moment, okay? Okay, this is going to make my screen look really dirty, apparently. <laughs> so, here we are. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna put sand on this on this plate. So they're gonna vibrate the plate. And it's gonna vibrate at different frequencies. The more you vibrate it, so this is 2,000 2, hertz. Let's go to 4,000 hertz. And I want you to see how complex this goes. Let's go to 4,600. Look at that. You see how it's getting more complex the higher it vibrates? Let's go back down for a second. This is a thousand. There's only a couple structures that are being formed. Let's go back to 46 or 5,000. Look at that. That's complex. Your body has electrical signals that vibrate the sand inside your body to do that. Now imagine this was an emotion or imagine this was an action or a movement that you needed to make. Your body sends an electrical signal that programs all the minerals in the sand to do something like this. And this creates a result. Now let's look at water. So if I pull water, frequency experiment. Okay, now this is really cool. So apparently I really need to clean, clean my screen. Okay, so here we go. What they're doing is water's coming out of this tap here. Look at that. Isn't that cool? So the water comes down and they're vibrating at a specific frequency and it changes shape. So what happens when we vibrate at a specific frequency? I want you to watch something for a moment. Okay, so what direction is the water going right now? It creates a spiral like the DNA. Now we're gonna go to, oh yeah, here's another one. It's a little bit more clear. Okay, but now it's gonna get really interesting. So let's go to the next one. 23 hertz. 
Watch this. What direction is the water going? What direction is the water moving? It's going up. How does it do that? How does the human body stand? We're 70% water. The rest of us is salt, sand, minerals, and bacteria and viruses. So the water goes up. 70% water. When you vibrate it at a specific frequency with electricity, it rises to stand. You have the salt, the minerals, the sand gets vibrated at a frequency, which creates your muscles, your bones, your tendons, your ligaments creates the, the physical structure. So the water is how we stand, and the physical structure takes on specific conformations based on the vibration of the sand. Now when you wanna move, you create a vibration signal, and that creates that action. Your body starts to move based on that signal. That's how I see the body. I don't even see the fascia. I just see the water, and I see the sand, and I see that there's a frequency which is based on your emotions and your thoughts and your feelings. And that all comes and it lands in this meat suit. But it's not so rigid. We are energy and that energy has a dense part, which is our physical body. How people say we have our aura, it's not true. Your aura is the le least dense part of you, which you can't see, well, most can't see. And the dense part of you is your physical body. Everything is, is made of um, little atoms or, or light molecules, and they're vibrating. And they don't actually touch. They never actually touch. They just look like they are. So that's how I see the body. I don't, when people talk about I have a tight muscle or I have a tight bone or I have a tight this, I don't even see it that way. I don't even see this tight fascia. I just see frequency. And that is the way to understand it. If you take a sound bowl and you put water in it and you vibrate the sound bowl, what happens to the water? It jumps. The water, it starts to boil. It starts to jump. Well, that's literally if you go, I'm really happy today. Boom, signal sent to the body. All the water in your body goes, hey, let's be happy. So that's how the body works, for my opinion. That's what I believe. That's how I see it. And when we talk about this or that, and it's super granular, and it's a very specific thing, it's like, it, you can't have one without the other. They're, they're connected to each other. So the fascial maneuvers help unwind the physical symptoms that you have built because the energetics were off. The energetics are off because you are not managing your emotions. You're holding on to trauma. You're holding on to the past memories. You're putting harmful frequencies into your tuning fork. You are a tuning fork. Actually, this is a good one to play as well. So. What is a tuning fork? And how does it work when you put another tuning fork in the room? So if we go to tuning fork, um, tuning fork on YouTube, sync. Let's see if I can find this. Tuning fork, okay. This is basic physics. So you've got two tuning forks. Let's see if he talks or... Okay, so he's gonna hit one. He took it away. So he hit this one. It's still going. What? Okay. So when you walk in a room and you're angry, I'm standing here, I'm doing work, and then I get dunk, and we sink. Now I feel it. And what do I do with that? is really the question. 
So we sink to our environment. If you have a toxic environment, eventually you will sink to your environment. That's why I'm so, I, I reiterate over and over and over again, clean your environment, create a healthy environment because that desk is vibrating, creating a sound in my room. That plant is creating a vibration in this room. I have a painting on the wall that creates a vibration in this room. If everything in my room has a vibration that's in alignment with who I want to become, then I will more likely become it. If I create an environment around me that's toxic, then I will synchronize to that environment over time. No matter how much I do, that's why people today, it's like, I do meditation, I do cold showers, I fast, I do intermittent fasting, I, I eat ketogenic, I do this, I take all my supplements, I, do, I work out every day, I do, and it's like the list is this long. And I'm like, holy smokes, like what is going on there? Why is it so off? Because your, your environment is sick and you're doing all those things to try and achieve this frequency or tuning fork frequency, you're trying to sync to a different frequency than your environment's allowing you to. Now, environment is ex external, but you also have internal. You can change your frequency just from thought. You can change your frequency just from visualization. You can change your frequency just with the intention. So you can do it both ways. And the ultimate way is to do it inside you and your body. Because if you do it inside you and your body, no matter where you go, what environment you're in, you are in control and you have your power and you can shift and adapt to your environment in real time. But if you're gonna live in it, why not just make it easier for yourself? Clean your environment. Stop putting bleach on your floor. Stop using fluoride in your toothpaste. Stop putting detergent on your body. Stop drinking Starbucks, please, stop. There's chemicals in there. It, we call it a poison distribution center. These places are distributing chemicals that harm your body every single day. And then you wake up wondering why you have brain fog and you wake up wondering why you have autoimmune and you wake up wondering why you're depressed. Because you're putting chemicals in your body. Please stop. Go to our reset programs. You can go to our website, do the one day, do the three day, do the seven day, do the 28 day, work your way up. We're gonna slowly guide you so that you can heal yourself. Now, it doesn't start with burning everything around you and starting from scratch. It starts from slowly finding out what's not in resonance with you and your environment. Pick one thing, focus on it. And over time, after four years, after five years, after 10 years, you'll have the environment that you want. You'll have the body that you want. You'll have the frequency that you want. So that's it for today. Thank you, everybody. Go join our programs. We're gonna be doing a worldwide global 28 day life reset on January 15th. We're gonna bring people from all around the world and we're gonna do the reset together and we're gonna go through it together because the world needs it now more than ever. People are not okay in their bodies. The environments are not okay today. It's time to clean them. It's time to create awareness. The more people that are aware and the more people that are working towards changing these things, the faster that it's going to happen. If every single person on this call right now stopped putting chemicals in their body, the world that we see next week or a month from now would be very different. So I'll see you in the reset programs and on my next slide on Thursday morning. Bye.